Hi, I'm Mary Catherine Beach, Professor of Medicine and Course Director for Scholarly Concentrations. I'm going to give you an overview and an orientation for what you can expect over the next couple of years. Well, first I want to ask, what do you most hope to gain from scholarly concentrations? Do you want just to get exposure to different types of scholarship so you can gain more in-depth knowledge in a field of your interest? Do you want exposure to different careers in medicine or a good relationship with a faculty mentor? Are you looking to really gain critical scholarship and communication skills? Or do you want to publish a first author peer-reviewed publication? The truth is that you can get any of these things out of scholarly concentrations, but I want to emphasize for you that it is not specifically our goal that you publish a first author paper. I know that sometimes students think that this is an important thing to do, and that is entirely fine with us if you do. We will try to help you get there, but what we really want you to do is to have fun and explore your passion and do something that you're excited about. We have five concentrations at Johns Hopkins. We have basic science, clinical research, ethics in the art of medicine, history of medicine, and public health and community service. Each of these leaders will talk to you about their specific concentration in a moment. For year one in scholarly concentrations, what you can expect is that you'll spend a few months now figuring out which concentration you want to be part of that you'll, in the first module, learn about that concentration, think about what your interests are and what mentors you might want to work with. In the second module, which is in February, you will identify your mentor and your project about that time. In module three, which can be around March or April, you refine your project objectives and methods. And in module four, you finalize the plans for your project. Then, just so you know what a module is, um, each module is three afternoons and it occurs during one of the time courses. Usually these modules go from three to five. Um, usually they're Tuesday through Thursday, but if you look at your schedule, you'll find that sometimes due to the way the calendar falls, you might end up having a Thursday, Friday, and a Monday um, module. But typically that's what you're expected, uh, where you're expected to be with us. The rest of the time is yours to do your project. Um, we expect that during the module, you'll actually stay with us um, in small groups or in individual meetings, and you'll spend that time working um, in that group and learning skills so that you can get your project done. The modules are not the time where we expect you to necessarily meet with your mentor or do the work of the project. In year two, starts out with the summer, which is really when the majority of the work on the project tends to get done. If you have a special circumstance where you can't work during the summer on your project, like you have another obligation, you just need to come and talk to us and we will figure out with you what's the best way to get the project done. But most students decide to do it in between the summer of first and second year. Module five and six occur during the second year. In module five usually is early October and it is when you begin to um, describe your findings, um, write an abstract. And then in module six, which tends to be January, February-ish, you will have your final pro project presentations and you will learn a lot about how to, how to do a presentation at a meeting. So also in February is Medical Student Research Symposium and during that symposium, we expect all scholarly concentration students to present their work. I think that now, as you're getting started, you will have an opportunity to attend a medical student research symposium during February of your first year. You'll be able to see what the projects look like that the class before you has done. I have to say that it is during the research symposium that everyone is probably most excited about the course because things have finally come to fruition and they're um, presenting their findings and they're excited about their work. So that's something that you will enjoy and will give you a lot of ideas for what your project might be. So that's what it looks like for the year, for the next two years. But in the first year, really, here you are, you're at the point now where we want you to choose a concentration. We don't really care whether you have a project or a mentor in mind. 
So we don't need you to rush ahead and figure that out. A lot of people do like to try to figure that out, but it doesn't matter to us. If you have a general sense of the, the type of uh, research project that you want to engage in, then you can um, pick that type of concentration at this point and then figure out the specifics of the project later. While you're thinking about which concentration you want to do, think about how you want to spend your time and what you're passionate about because this project will take a lot of your time and we want you to be excited about it. We want it to be something that you look forward to doing. Um, you might think about which area of medicine you're drawn to and try to explore that a little further, but whatever the project is should be exciting. So do something that you're interested in where you think you'll enrich yourself and that is probably your best bet in terms of advice for picking a concentration. If you want to talk to any of us, we have office hours up in room 235. I, as the course director, will have office hours. We'll post them um, on Blackboard and OASIS. The concentration faculty will also have office hours, and those will be posted as well. And on Blackboard, we have the uh, abstract booklets from previous medical student research symposiums. So you can look through what a bunch of your uh, classmates that came before you have done and decide what's exciting to you. Um, it'll give you good ideas for mentors and projects and give you a good sense of what type of scholarship gets done um, in, in each type of concentration. When we ask you to submit your choice of concentration, we'll ask for a first choice and a second choice. I am not going to assign anyone to a concentration that they don't want to be in. The reason for the first choice and the second choice is because a lot of times there's a project that falls in between two concentrations. So if you give me a sense of, you know, I might want public health and community service, but I'm torn between that and history of medicine, and you put one first and one second, and then indicate, we'll give you some space to indicate whether you know what you want to work on or not, and again, that's not essential. You indicate that you're sort of torn, but you think you might really want to do this type of project. And I think at the end that it's worth contacting you to discuss it further, then I'll do that. But I wouldn't switch anyone away from their first choice of concentration without asking you first and talking to you about it. So it helps us to get a second choice from everybody. And then also we can balance out concentrations if we need to um, by, by taking some scholarship that's in between two of the concentrations and having faculty from one of the other concentrations uh, take charge of advising you on that project. So as I said, there's concentration overlap. There's probably no way in which I can't imagine any of the concentrations not overlapping with any of the others. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about which concentration you pick right now, um, but come and talk to us so that we can advise you because we're really excited to see what you guys are going to do this year.